I've got a question for you and you're going to need to reveal whether you mm -hmm. know it as you know, as soon as I, as soon as I give it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you two sequences <clears throat> and I'm going to ask you, uh, to find me, um, the lowest number that appears on both sequences. Oh, okay. Okay. I don't think and I you're allowed to go ahead. Oh, uh, we'll, we'll find out. And you're well, allowed to, um, you're allowed to name probably. a number and then come back later and say, actually, I have a lower one. Oh, okay. So that's, you know, that's yeah. fine. It's not like a one and done kind of thing. Okay. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Let me see here. So the the first sequence um, goes like this: two, five, eight, eleven, fourteen, seventeen, and so on. So we're mm -hmm. starting with two and we're going up by threes. Mm -hmm. The second sequence is the positive perfect squares: one, Ooh. four, nine, sixteen, twenty-five, and so on. I see. Um, so now it would be enough. lovely. I don't now. Mm -hmm. I know that this is a big ask. But mm -hmm. to whatever degree either of you can narrate your thought process, I think that could be really helpful. On the other hand, I know that that can be really uh, distracting to try and oh, sorry to try and explain what you're thinking about. But I'll just I'll throw that out there as a possibility. I always I always narrate everything <laughs> in my life anyway. So I'm, there you I'm go. happy to try. Okay. Okay. All right. So um, here's a way to character. We could do it two ways. Um, uh -huh. We could. Um, we could um, express the first sequence as um, 3K, where K is some integer, plus 2. I agree um, that all the numbers on the first list yeah. could be expressed as 3K plus 2 for any integer K. For any integer K. <clears throat> any any non-negative integer K, yeah. sure. And then we can ask um, which... Uh, what is the what's the least perfect square that is two more than a multiple of three? Um, okay. So it's going to have to be an odd number. Oh no, I'm sorry, that's that's completely false, actually. And then right, because every just, other multiple of yeah, three is even. Of course, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then I might just do cases at that point because um, it the. Um, it, it doesn't seem to me that it should take that long to get there. Um, could work. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you could go the other direction as well, you know, from three K plus two to perfect squares, but I think I would. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then if, if I, if I got through like seven or eight of these things and I hadn't been, I hadn't well, achieved. I'm, I'm, I'm very fast. So I'm, I'm way past yeah. there. Okay. So what you're and doing, if you're still uh, Peter, not getting it, then I might think, well, that's not a great way to do it. <laughs> so, so you're, so what you're doing, Pete, is you're brute forcing this, uh, just but to I, get. I assumed, like, and I'm a little confused right now because I'm thinking of this is, you know, the, the first set of numbers is two mod three. That's what the set of numbers is. Is the set mm -hmm. of numbers that are two mod three. Okay. Um, which, and which, by the way, for those for those following along at home, in other words. It's all the. It, it's it's a different way of saying what Michael has said. These are all the numbers that are two more than a multiple of three. And so I was looking at the the perfect squares and assuming there will be some pattern, and there is. But unfortunately, <clears throat> the pattern is one one zero one one zero, which doesn't, as far as I can tell, have any twos in it. Um, which is why I'm somewhat. So I'm sort of surprised here and perplexed because I'm like, what's going to change? Like, how am I? Yeah. Ever, why is this right. ever yeah. going to not be true? Like, okay, like I, so let's I'm, just I'm, let's review some of the let's review some of the things you've said. First of all, you said every third uh, every third perfect square is zero more than a multiple of three. Yeah. In other words, is a multiple of three, which makes sense mm -hmm. because every mm -hmm. third every third perfect square is three squared, six squared, nine squared, whatever. Yeah. And what you're saying is that all the perfect squares that aren't that are exactly one more than a multiple of three. Yeah. Right. And which it seems. seems to me it seems it implausible makes because, because it, it makes sense because if you take one and square it one mod three you get one and if you take two and square it you get four which is also one mod three and so okay. since all the numbers are either zero mod three one mod three or two mod three um i'm perplexed how i'm ever going to get a two out of this well hang on a second <clears throat> why does the fact that one squared and two squared are both one mod three lead you to believe that all the other ones will also be one mod three other than the well, fact without, that you've established proof, a pattern because, because for instance four is the same as one mod three and five is the same as two mod three and ah and therefore when you square them 
although you are squaring four and five respectively, you're really just squaring one mod three and two mod right. three so respectively. I, I'm getting convinced <laughs> the answer is it doesn't exist. Yeah. Um, mm. Because I've gone, I mean, it's like, it's like there's a clear pattern. Um, so, so it, like, <clears throat> I mean, I'm at, I'm pretty quick at math, so I, I'm in the mid 30s, yeah. and it, the pattern is holding perfectly, and I'm kind of perplexed mm -hmm. as to why it's ever going to break. Meaning well, I'm all right, let's do this. I'll tell you what. May I make a geometric argument that it's not going to break? Sure, I'd love that because I was just about to suggest: could we focus on demonstrating or even proving yeah. that there is no such number? Yeah, go ahead, Michael. I, I think right. I kind so of have. Is there anyway. a way that I can? Um, uh, is there like a whiteboard here? <laughs> right on the screen. Oh my gosh, yes. that would require yeah. us to have some idea of what the hell we're doing around here. Uh, oh, you know here. what? I don't. Share, share gives me screen. Oh no, it's giving me my whole screen, isn't it? Hey, that's fine. Oh, share gives me right. a right. presentation right. option. Let's just click it and see what happens. All right, that sounds like fun. Let's Open, learn more uh, about that. Uh, upload a slide. No, I'm not going to upload anything. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Um, all right. Why don't we do How about a... if I describe it to you? Okay. That sounds good. Let's do it. <laughs> all right. Um, Choose an arbitrary perfect square and represent it geometrically as guess what? A, a square. square. A square, right? Sure. Okay. Um, Seven square. But, and I'm just picking, sure. I'm picking the arbitrary it's N by number. N. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The next perfect square is going to be two n plus one. Ooh, true. You buy two n that? plus one more than, more than the, the previous one. one. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that will be two n plus <laughs> one greater. Um, sure. So that is. Uh, um, if n and, and so we so um, the um, and we can actually set up a path. There's a few ways to go from here, but let's let's just look at the next three after that. All still stay in terms of n, right? All right. So there'll be two. Uh, I'm going to write this down. So, don't so make we've mistake. got n squared, n squared right, plus n two squared. n plus one. Yep. And and then, then n squared plus four n plus four. I'm drawing right. in my mind right. to make yeah, sure yeah. that you're... Yeah. Um, and the um, n squared plus 4n plus 4, n squared plus 2n plus 1. Now, I think if we... Uh, so we can, we can assume... Um, we can assume... Oh, I see. Um, I see at this point. I, I see the... I yeah. see I can prove it at this point. Yeah, sure. Okay. Go ahead. I'll, I'll let you... I'll oh, let, you, let you do the word let's thing. Assume that n squared, <laughs> let's assume yeah. that n is the multiple of three. So then yeah. n squared okay. is by definition a multiple of three. Well, 2n right. plus one. Um, More than that. Right. 2n it's, it's plus one. one. Yeah. Um, wait, if oh, n is one. Yeah. four. <clears throat> no, n is a multiple of three, you just said. That's right. n is a multiple of yeah. three. So 2n, so 2n plus one is never a multiple of three, and nor is 4n plus four. Well, let's put it well, this way. Okay. If n, three, yeah. then two n is a multiple of three, and adding one will not be a multiple of yeah. three, meaning that one that I kept getting. Yeah. And then four and n is will add in four. three. And in fact, you get that same one one zero one. one right, that's zero my pattern. point. That's my point. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, we might we might find it helpful to say, if we start with n squared, then mm -hmm. the next layer that makes it an n plus one by n plus one square is adding two n plus one. Mm -hmm. The next layer adds another. 2n plus two n. 3, so plus 3. The next plus one adds three, yeah. another 2n plus 5, then plus 7, mm -hmm. and so on. Yeah. Which means we're starting with a multiple of 3, then we add 1, making it mm -hmm. 1 more than a multiple of 3. Then we add yeah. 3 more, still mm -hmm. 1 more than a multiple of 3. Then we add 5, <laughs> making it a multiple of 3 again. Yeah. And then but, surely again. This, but surely this will break if n isn't a multiple of 3. So let's run that experiment. Okay. So let's say that n is 1 more than a multiple of 3. <clears throat> Then mm -hmm. I claim for starters that n squared will be one more than a multiple of three. Right. You buy that? Yeah, because it's one mod three squared. One squared is one. Okay, let's say that, that that feels to a listener like hand waving. Can mm -hmm. we pick that apart a little bit and explain why a number, well, I, I sorry, l allow me mm -hmm. to explain why. A number that's one more than a multiple of three, one squared, will yield a number that's also one more than a multiple of three. My reasoning is, whatever the number is that is one more than a multiple of three, let's just call P the multiple of three that it's one more than. Mm -hmm. Then okay. P plus one yeah. squared is P squared plus two P plus one. 
The P squared is a multiple of three. The two P is a multiple of three. And, and I've got that plus one at the end, making it one more. Okay, so if my N is one more than a multiple of three, I square it, it's still one more than a multiple of three. I add two N plus one. It seems like now it's two more than a multiple of three because of the plus one. Mm -hmm. But that neglects the fact that two N plus one, the N's are themselves one more than a multiple of three. In adding two N plus one, where N is one more than a multiple of three, I've actually added some number of multiples of three and three more. Two for each of the two N and then the one more of the plus one. Did I lose both of you? I, um, I, I, sort I, of, I mean, two, I, I two thirds have it. Um, <laughs> okay. The, I have it because it's the underlying logic of what Peter was doing anyway. Right. If you see what I mean. So Peter's very good at the, at the computation, at, at the, yeah. like the, uh, the, the kind of algorithmic side, uh, very fast processing speed. But what he said implied, I mean, what he said was justified by what you said. So I'm not sure I followed you but I already knew what path you were taking, so that's fine. Yeah, all right, so you're both leaning into your individual strengths. I'm gonna try and explain this in a way that doesn't require those strengths. So that anyone who's following, I mean, you, you know, just, just right? no, like- No, I'm laughing because that's obviously a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah and the fact that my explanation requires you guys to be you guys in order to understand it, then it's probably not yeah. a very good explanation in the first place. Okay, mm -hmm. so if I take some number that is P plus one, it's one more than a multiple of three, and I square it, mm -hmm. then I get P squared plus two P plus one, which sure. is one more than a multiple of three. Then I do your geometric thing where I add another layer, like I've got mm -hmm. my square and I'm adding another one mm -hmm. wide layer in an L shape, right? Around, right. The, around part of the outside. So then I'm adding one more N, which is P plus one. I'm adding one more N, which is P plus one. And I'm adding the one in the corner. Mm -hmm. So I've added a multiple of three plus one, another multiple of three plus one, and another one. So I've added two multiples of three and three individual units. Therefore, my result is still one mod the three. Same. It's, okay, that makes mm -hmm. sense. When I, I, do I got it, it that time. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> when I do it again, now I'm adding the layer that is n plus n plus three. Mm -hmm. And again, my n is one more than a multiple of three. So now I'm adding two to my one mod three, and now it's a multiple of three. And again, it follows the same pattern that you had before. No matter what number I start with, we're going to see this one one zero one one zero one one zero. Although maybe it'll be one zero one one zero one or zero one. Depending on where you start, sure. Depending on where you start, yeah, exactly, exactly. But anyway, you slice it. That's the way it's going to work. And another way that we could <clears throat> we could say this is, um, uh, let's see here. If you take any number k that is multiple mm -hmm. of three and square it, you'll get k squared, which is multiple of three. If you take k plus 1 and square it, you'll get k squared plus 2k plus 1, which is 1 more than a multiple of 3. If you take 2 more than a multiple of 3, k plus 2 squared, now you get k squared plus 4k plus 4, which is a multiple of 3 plus 4, mm -hmm. which is 1 more than a multiple of 3. There's no way to get a right. 2 at the end. At mm -hmm. this point, I'm kind of beating the dead horse, but uh, I need a different expression for that. But um, we're, we're, we're circling around this fact from a couple of different perspectives to really lock it in our minds, which I think is an important piece of this kind of preparation. Like it's not enough to solve the problem. You really want to think about, okay, what, what have I learned? And the first thing I've learned is no perfect square is two more than a multiple of three, mm -hmm. but maybe more deeply. <laughs> <come in> handy. <laughs> well, you know, it, it could, but more importantly, I've learned an important intuitive underpinning of number theory. Like I started my, um, like I always had some like number theory to me was something that was kind of on the periphery of what I, you know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, they're going to no, bring in the, the number theory, whatever. Part of all math. <laughs> well, yeah, no, it's, it's, what, what's just, the famous I'm just quote? i my own bias in. <laughs> yeah. But like, what's, what's the famous, was it Gauss or Euler or someone who was like, math is the king of all the sciences and number theory is the queen of all subs of all of the areas of math or some such thing. I'm sure I'm butchering the quote. Um, but I, I, I remember to this day years ago, um, being stumped by this problem and lying awake in bed until I figured it out. And then it was like, oh, this is why people like number theory. Okay, now I well, get it. Now, <laughs> now, now I just want to give you the problem. I, 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 won't, I, I heard it at the poker table. I think I've given this to you already, Wes. Um, a a quasi-math problem um, uh -oh. that, that I literally spent like – a week and a half and I, I couldn't figure it out. And I woke up bolt upright at three 30 in the morning one day. Cause like, you know, somewhere in the background it had processed. And yeah. Like, oh, yep. Thank God. 
finally. Yeah. So what's, right, the, what's, what's the, the thing? Yeah. 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 Okay, so this is this is this is a weird thing because the problem isn't getting the answer. You know the answer. Okay. The problem is understanding uh-huh. why the answer. Okay. So you have right. two envelopes. I think I've done this with you, Wes. Um, it's right. a fairly two envelopes. Problem. Um, okay. And uh, one envelope has twice as much money as the other, but you don't mm-hmm. know which one. Sure. Okay. okay. What? And one of the envelopes started with. Uh, fifty dollars and and one with a hundred. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> oh, I think I see where this is going. This is um, interesting. You oh, have wait, an envelope. You, you don't know you, which one. You don't know, by the way. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You do I know I, the amounts. The amount. I butchered the problem a little bit. I I, I have to start over. I butchered the problem. Okay. A Wind bit. back. Okay. That's fine. Wind yeah. back. Um. So one envelope has twice as much money as the other. Okay. And you don't know which is which. If I offer you envelope A, do you want to switch or keep the one you have? <clears throat> Okay. So wait, l- let me make sure yeah. that I understand the the implied constraints here. What I mm-hmm. think you're saying is you have two envelopes. You're not telling me how much money is in each, but you are warranting correct. that one of them contains one of them twice as much as the other. other. Correct. That is exactly correct. And if I randomly you hand have... you an envelope, would you want to change and envelopes with me? That was the next thing. You randomly hand me an envelope. I randomly you are hand not... you an envelope. Do you have any interest in changing envelopes or keeping the one you have? Okay. So the so the, there are two conflicting Right. Explanations here. Explanation well, I, I, number one is, is – We haven't even gotten to the problem yet. Oh, haven't well, we? Because I, I think well, – I'm, 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 I'm still in setup. Like, okay. this I thought the problem was right. going to be do, do you want to, to trade envelopes? Yeah, but because at this point, the that, answer that's is what, clearly you have no idea. I haven't told you how much is in either envelope. I haven't told you what was, amount was in your envelope. I've told you nothing other than one envelope all that. is twice the amount as the other. So yeah, right. yeah. That's fine. it seems yeah, fairly clear that. that you should be indifferent at this point since you have no information. Well, that's one and of I, the two, that's right. one of the two explanations, and then there's right. a conflicting right. explanation that says, "Well, I have an envelope that has X money, right? And, and if I, I trade, I have a fifty percent chance yeah. of having X yeah. over two Y two X, yeah. and the and expected value of the trade, the therefore, value, is to yeah. increase by twenty five percent. Is yeah. right. Yeah. So, so clearly, yeah, by yeah. that logic. Now, but, and by the way, that's there's there's <laughs> obviously something wrong with the second explanation well, that's the point the question yeah. is why is the second What's explanation wrong, wrong? Yeah. Yeah. clearly yeah. in yeah. reality you should be indifferent but we all mm-hmm. have this very especially this is a weird problem because people who really don't know anything about math don't get what the problem is but you instantly yeah. latch onto the problem that it <clears throat> yeah. seems yeah. like there should be a positive expectation to changing envelopes although clearly right. there is not and so the question right. is uh-huh. why why what is right. causing this anomalous mathematical result Okay. Well, so I mean, a couple since things. we're talking about expected, you, like the expected result of making a choice, the what occurs to me is to make a flowchart and track the outcome. <clears throat> of, uh, how probable is each uh, outcome of each decision? And I'm sure confident that if we do that correctly, we're going to be indifferent. <clears throat> Correct. Sure. And if we do, do that, that correctly, correctly sir. Just, yeah. All right. The basic way. <laughs> The, the, the basis way of doing it is saying, I have a 50% chance of gaining X yeah. and a 50% chance of yeah, losing yeah. 0.5X okay. indicates that you should not be indifferent. Mm-hmm. Okay, right. so let me take this. So a couple things. Go ahead. Yeah. A couple things. First of all, I want to frame this question not just as a puzzle, but as a very helpful example of how throwing math at a problem can go wrong. And I see this all the time in combinatorics, especially, probably mm. in combinatorics, where you're using the mechanics of math mostly right, but mostly right is only enough to get you in trouble. So mm-hmm. what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repeat the clearly flawed explanation. Then I'm going to give you a second flawed explanation that helps to shed light on why the first one is flawed. Now, do you know this question point. previously, Wes? Um, so uh, right out of college, I uh, was recruited by an investment bank to be one of their tech people like they they had tried to teach the bankers tech and that failed so then they tr- they hired a bunch of us nerds and tried to teach us banking in the hopes that they could make a bunch of money off us uh which was a pretty successful program and i learned a lot and and i remember we had like a, a finance boot camp and if if this problem wasn't in it there was one that was substantially the same okay okay but i think this problem was i think this was the one Probably. and i it's still a fairly remember famous it. problem in math it's a fairly famous thing the guy um the guy who was heading the class was only three years ahead of me in school, three or four years ahead of me in school. Um, I still remember his alligator skin shoes. And he offered um, to take uh, whoever could explain this, he'd take him up in a helicopter ride. 
And we just peppered him with questions, you know, until he finally just relented and said, all right, here's the explanation, as I recall. But, yeah. well, but I didn't know that. then what I know now about analyzing Here's the explanation. Stuff. Wow. I've not seen the problem before, and there's the explanation. It couldn't you be You have or you have not? I have not, but the but just I can't really, little, you're a little blurry, so I actually can't see whatever it is you put up there. Well, why don't you let West talk, and then I will describe the world's simplest flowchart. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. So, so yeah. here's my here's my beginning of an explanation. I'm going to start by just winding through what we are confident is wrong. So I have an envelope. So I have mm -hmm. an envelope. It has X dollars in it. If I trade, then with equal probability, I will be trading for X over two or two X. Mm -hmm. That means the expected value of my new envelope is the average of those two, 2x plus x over 2 over 2, which is 1.25x, 5x over 4. Mm -hmm. So clearly trading is the right answer. <clears throat> now I'm going to run that scenario again, only this time, x is the envelope you're holding. So if you're holding the envelope with x, clearly my envelope either contains x over 2 or 2x which means the expected value of my envelope is 5x over 4. So I can clearly not choose the wine in front of you. Uh, sorry, Princess Bride <laughs> reference. Yeah, yeah, we got um, it, we got it, yeah. But, but, the, but the point is, right, like I can do it either way to make it seem yeah. like I should or shouldn't trade. And that's mm -hmm. my first clue that something screwy is going on here. Well, yeah, I mean, yes, it is clearly <clears throat> not right because – when I didn't tell you the amounts of money or anything, it's, you're obviously yeah. indifferent and, and doing this little piece of math, as you say, mm -hmm. using a tool that seems very reasonable and in fact is very reasonable in many situations, um, using it in this particular situation, it's not the right tool. Okay, so now, Michael, I'll, why don't you take us through the flowchart? Okay, what yes. problem with what you've done, by the way, Wes, which is, oh. and my problem is that you're not doing what I want you to do, not that you've done the wrong thing, right? So. I mean, I, because, I, now, I, now yeah. that we're talking about it, I remember another piece that, that yeah. needs to be brought in the conversation that none of us have brought up well, yet, no, but go I, on. I, what you've done is, I mean, because what you wanted to do is motivate the idea that the second form of reasoning was the flawed form of reasoning, right? Right. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to remember, I should, I, was, I went to grad school in philosophy, I cannot, and I've got no sleep up here as we're waiting for this All right. dude to, you know. Yep, I got it. So the, um, there's a, Kant uses the term, it's not unique to him, but he famously uses this device where he draws one conclusion and he actually does it on, on he splits the page in two, by the way. He draws one okay. conclusion on one side of the page, apparently validly, and then he draws uh -huh. the opposite conclusion on the other side of the page, apparently validly, um, and then he resolves the apparent contradiction at the bottom, right? And okay. so the so that's what I'm waiting for, because the, the, the apparent contradiction is going to have to show not that the second method of reasoning is false, which you've done perfectly, but, uh, but why it's, I mean, it's a kind of weird, but like the, okay, we can. What's wrong with it? It, it, it does, right, it doesn't actually get in. It demonstrates that the argument must be invalid because the conclusion is false, right? It moves. It, 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 because it moves from true premises to a false conclusion, it must be invalid, right? But it doesn't really get in and, and show you where the wheels came off, right? So, anyway, so, to, so I'll, I'll insert at this point that mm -hmm. I think a possibly naive point that one can make here is no envelope can contain half a cent. So there's a bound on the amount of money that can be there. And mm -hmm. maybe more helpfully on the other end, there is not an infinite amount of money in the world. There is some upper bound yeah. beyond which that can't be the X envelope. It has to be the two X envelope. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and my recollection from, you know, 350 years ago when I first encountered this problem is that, <clears throat> is that that observation is uh, an important part of the explanation that somehow the fact that, the X and two X are limited on one or both ends sort of propagates through and pollutes the whole system somehow. Well, I but will I say the that after I solved it, I did show good self-discipline in not looking up the answer because I was aware this was something <laughs> one could find. And after mm -hmm. I did yeah. get my answer in a way that made sense to me, I did look it up online and there are at least a half dozen different, like fundamentally different sure. parts of the answer to this. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, okay. Yeah. That reminds yeah, me of another one that I want to, yeah. uh, that I want to throw out to you guys, but let's, let's stay here. Yeah, the and I mean it's interesting because the problem that West posed, 
we played around with different methods of solving that problem, algebraic, number theoretic, geometric, and yeah. those all seem legitimate to me. And the, and in a certain way, you know, um, they all seem like sort of the same underlying reasoning, right? More or less, yeah. But yeah, yeah. so, but for 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 this case, I I don't know. For this, this seems to me like there's a tool for this kind of job. If the job is to is to determine expected return, then you do like a Bayesian analysis, right? So, uh, so the so all the other, I really like Wes. It had not occurred to me the idea that uh, um, uh, that. Uh, uh, that it's the problem is kind of symmetrical in the way you describe. Yeah, I'm privileging right? I, I really my like envelope by calling it X. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, part of the reason it wouldn't occur to me is because I'm like, oh, I know how to do these. Here's a flowchart. You know. Yeah. So, what's on your yeah. flowchart? Yeah, I'm interested about the flowchart. Okay. Well, because um, that's not so how I did the, it. The two values you could have are X and two X. That makes sense. Okay. My envelope your contains X. Or my envelope X contains two X. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The well. So I, I mean, you could set up the flowchart in different ways. The way I chose to do it is to say, uh, I'm ignorant, <laughs> right? Of the um, I'm ignorant of which envelope I have, right? So right. Th this it is quick and dirty. I could maybe make it a little prettier, but so if we if we just draw two rays, I don't know what the correct term is from X to show the two equally likely outcomes, right? If we change envelopes, we'll now have 2x. If we don't change envelopes, we'll now have x, right? Each of okay. those, there's a 50% probability. If we have 2x and we change envelopes, we have x, we don't change envelopes, we have 2x, 50% probability, right? And so we could cast the two outcomes. Um, we can cast the, well, we notice a couple of things. First of all, if we're tossing a coin to determine where we're going to end up, it doesn't matter whether we have the X or the two X in the first place, which is what you'd expect because of course you have an equal probability of getting each envelope if you're just tossing a coin. Hang on a second. Let me, also, read this. Yeah, yeah. Let me read this back right. to you in a different way to make sure that I'm, I'm tracking here. Please, yeah. So you're saying I could have the X or the two X, 50% mm -hmm. chance of either. If I have yeah. the X, uh, actually, let me put it this way. Before yeah. I switch, 50% chance of X or two X, therefore my expected value is 1.5 X. Mm -hmm. Whereas if I have the X in trade, I'll get two X. If I have the two X in trade, I'll have X, which means um, if I trade, what I'll have is a 50% chance of X or two X, which is the same mm -hmm. as what I started with. Yeah. Yeah. You're getting much closer to the way I thought about it. Yes. Okay. So in other words, our real mistake is introducing this X over two idea, which is a well, form of privileging one of the two envelopes. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I'll let you guys talk for a while. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. this is all good. No, no I feel okay. like we've. I feel like we yeah, solved I, it. Right? I know it's solved. Yeah, because what, 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 what your is, is that your the reason why the two x and the, the expected value analysis is wrong is because you're assuming there's this this thing called x that is constant throughout the problem, and there isn't. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I like that. You're in these two yeah. different situations. And oh thing you're, crap! Thing, oh no! The thing you're thinking that was the same yeah. isn't real. Oh, that's right. Of that's course, because X is changing depending yeah. on the situation, right? And you uh, don't and notice it. Actually, this, that, that's, this that's, is, that's the thing I woke up and I, I being yeah. mad with numbers. I just used two hundred. By the way, this is the thing at the bottom of the split page that Kant does, where, as I right. say, he doesn't just tell you what's right. He shows you, you know, as it were. Where you uh, or, or you know, where the wheels came off, right? So right. Where the wheels came off. Yeah. I like that. And what's yeah. interesting about that too is that it's a mistake that shows up in much, much simpler um, <clears throat> calculations because we all know that um, if we give someone a, a not subtle at all but sufficiently complex um, uh, uh, um, problem about uh, percent changes, where there are a few of these things changing over the course of the problem. People keep thinking, you know, that 10% is 10% is 10%, right? Um, the, it, it, I think it's an analogous mistake. The, um, um, so anyway, that, no, that's very good, Pete. Well, I just, uh, you know, 
That's why you should go play poker because you can get interesting problems. Like that. <laughs> I like it. So I I read something. I, I'll throw this out here. Uh, this is going to seem only barely relevant, but wait, I wait. would. Mm -hmm. Michael, you got that so much faster than I did. I'm really impressed. I spent forever <laughs> like this. This problem vexed me because because I got it's too, tricky. I, I'm such a numbers guy, and it just it just mm -hmm. you know it really frustrated me for a long time. So you did way better with this than I did. I, part of the explanation for that is. Uh, and there's no false modesty. I, right now, my processing speed is it's just garbage. Um, the, my first night here, I got 90 minutes sleep, and it's just oh it's no, just, it's right. And so I have to do something else, <laughs> which is an advantage yeah. in this case. I may have, I think I told this. No, Wes, you may remember this. Before I was working with Wes, after I worked with Wes, and then before I worked with Wes again, Wes um, had a. Uh, had a, a meeting uh, for uh, any interested members of BATS uh, that was called something like using puzzle solving to teach or something. Yeah, or, or, you know, basically, it was yeah. like, what can you do with the tools that we use for competitive math in other kind of teaching contexts? And so we're sitting around this table, and everyone at the table has at least as much math as I have, because I had the two yeah, I mean, years. These, these are guys yeah. who... Like yeah. they may not have direct graduate degrees in math or whatever, yeah. but when it comes to basic high school level math and slightly beyond. And, and not even that. For the most part, the people there were the STEM guys. And yeah. so like I – so I had uh, – in college, I went through what's called sophomore math at the time at Cal, which mm -hmm. is like LADE, right? Um, and the uh, – it's just what you have to take if you could be like a uh, uh, any kind of science major um, – but not a math major, right? So, yeah. and, and lots of people in the room had more than me. Um, and it was kind of their bread and butter as well. So, and like you, Pete, I want to be right first, right? So the, um, uh, so Wes asked this question. Am I that and transparent? That is, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, game recognizes game. So the, uh, um, so uh, Wes asked this question and it is, uh, you know, Mike and Pete, you're, Michael and Pete, you're going to flip a coin. And the first person to get heads is the winner. Michael, if you're flipping first, what are the odds that you're going to win? And it's a very similar circumstance in that I knew that if I tried to remember how to calculate the outcome of a, the, the, the sum of the terms in a geometric sequence, that someone would get there a half second before me to, to the, because they don't have to try to remember. They've got it at the tip of their fingers and then they're probably going to process. I'm a pretty smart guy. They'll process a quarter second slower than me, but they still beat me by a quarter second, right? So I just had to think of a, a way that didn't require any computation and didn't require to remember anything. And then Wes will not remember because he's too kind to remember it. I uh, thought of it and um, then I just made like a kind of obvious gesture, like, well, I'm clearly done, you know, like this, so that uh, so that everybody knew that I that I had finished it first. And did you have so, it right? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It was it was. Uh, Two -thirds. Imagine the, Two -thirds, imagine yeah. the yeah imagine the the um, uh, imagine the possibilities as as uh, matched pairs. So I have a half. Pete has a uh, has a quarter. And then I right. have an eighth, and Pete has a sixteenth, and then so on, so on. For every one of these pairs, my odds are twice as twice what Pete's are. So if you add Ooh, them all up, my so odds are twice. That's clever. Twice. What a good yeah. way. Oh wait, it gets it. it gets it gets better. Oh, it did get better because <laughs> Wes said, you know, Wes is like, well, um, you need to make sure that's true by like pressure tested, right? And so his suggestion of a pressure test was suppose that you get tails on the first one. Now what happens? And of course the answer is, well, now Pete has two -thirds. a two thirds chance going forward. But of course Pete has, that means that is to say Pete has a one half of a two thirds chance and Hey, it, it survived the pressure test. And, right. my, and that, it, when Wes says like, you need to pressure test. I'm like, I don't think I do. I'm putting my answer. <laughs> I think I'm good just where I am. I don't see, yeah, I don't see any reason to think about this twice. If you do it right the first time, you know. So, anyway. So yeah. good. So good. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. And I, another way that I've seen it done, uh, which is, is, is pretty similar, is the notion of whatever your chance is, the same should be true of Pete 
um, oh, yeah, um, yeah. after the first round, but without all oh, the calculations. Yeah. There's a yeah, symmetry yeah, that's good. argument yeah, yeah. there, right? Right, um, because you could then, you could, if you put algebraically, right, you could say, um, I guess what you'd say is... It means um, I have to have half the chance that he does. So basically X plus yeah, yeah. half X equals right. one. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. I've got a couple more for you. Are you are faster at that stuff. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so first I'm going to read something that I read in the New York times letters to the editor today. Ooh, um, okay. Because like I read it and it may be that I'm misreading the situation. I haven't was, prepped by reading all the New York times letters. To the that's editor, okay. By the it way, really, so, okay. it really struck me. This was a, this okay. was a discussion of, uh, of COVID vaccines. I'm not trying to be political <laughs> or anything like that, but uh, I'm just going to read not it. Idiots. <laughs> To the editor. Oh, like there are other audience too. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> to the editor. I'm shocked that this doctor's patients, this was one in a, mm. a, a string. I'm shocked that mm. this doctor's patients could not articulate why they did not want to get the COVID vaccine. I'm writing to tell you why, at least from my humble experience. I've had the COVID vaccine twice now, and I've had COVID once. The effects mm-hmm. of the vaccine were far worse than actually getting COVID. <laughs> The first time you already, the first time I'm just going to continue. Were you idiots? You were vaccinated. I'm just, I'm just going to continue. Yeah, yeah. You've already yeah, yeah, yeah. spoiled the yeah, punchline. Yeah. The yeah, first sorry, time yeah. I had intense chills and fever and was immobile for 24 yeah. hours. The second time, mm-hmm. which was just a few weeks ago, I became incredibly nauseous, vomited, and felt sick and immobile for days after. Mm-hmm. COVID itself, very mild fever, cough, but completely mobile and fine. I got the COVID vaccine this year only because I'm pregnant, and supposedly that makes me high risk but I will never mm-hmm. ever get it again, who would voluntarily want to make themselves that ill when they might not ever get COVID at all. And if they did, would be far less painful and life disrupting than the vaccine. El Wallach, Long Beach, New York. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now you've already, you've already kind of given your, yeah. okay, but let's, let's well, unpack let me, this let me in the context. You're going to have to edit out, by the way, okay? Oh, okay. no, there's no editing, okay. but go ahead. Okay. I know Wallach <laughs> to be a Jewish name, generally. Uh-huh. So I'm okay. very disappointed that this woman is flouting the stereotype. I hope that she married into the faith. So the uh... <laughs> wow, <laughs> we got it. Did you... Wow, okay, that's where you're going to go with this. There you now, go. Now, now yeah. we're testing the editing software. Yeah, yeah. Now you got yeah, to exactly. edit that out. Yeah. Oh my word. <laughs> let's let's hold our comments to mathematical if we if we can. Oh, oh. Um, help me help me understand. Help yeah. our audience understand mm-hmm. what. Um, what cognitive bias you hear here, right? And and how it often affects our ability to reason clearly about situations that otherwise might have a mathematical underpinning. Mm-hmm. It shows something of a lack of understanding of causality. Um, like, as Michael was saying, you know, she didn't have as severe a case of COVID because she had the vaccine and she's not seeing the causal link between those events. She's treating it as sort of she had the, you know, basically as if the vaccine, since the vaccine obviously, basically effectively, she's saying the vaccine itself, other than making her sick, obviously did nothing is the implied assumption of her argument. <laughs> or and that whatever could, effect it had. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you could... Suppose a person starts with the misconception that the point of the vaccine is to uh, prevent any. To, yes. Yeah, for, well, oh, no, pre, well, just to prevent contracting the, the, the virus in the first place. Right. Oh, all if right. you think if you think COVID is COVID is COVID is COVID, you know, it, 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 uh, all the cases. Oh, are the I hadn't same. thought of this. It's oh, just yes. a question of whether you contract it or not. Right. So in other words, it um, keeps you from getting it. Keeps you from getting it. Is by the, the way, I had a conversation with a number of people. I had a conversation uh, maybe three weeks ago with a friend of mine uh, whom I knew would have some loony ideas about, about so the vaccine. So you brought so it up to the person yeah. you knew would have a loony idea? No, she brought it up. Because um, she, she and her husband had both had COVID and maybe her... I think she, her husband, and her two daughters had all had COVID, right? All right. And she... Um, uh, and I, I believe her claim was... They've all been vaccinated. You know, her husband had to be vaccinated because he had this serious heart heart condition, right? Okay. Um, and uh, yet, each of her children, each of her two children had had COVID twice. She had had COVID only once, right? And so, like, you know, so she clearly understands the point of, she's a very smart woman, by the way, but she clearly okay. understands the point of the vaccine to be prevent preventing, um, you know, you from, from contracting the disease. Um, and, you know, it's like, 
um, why do you think, uh, I, uh, well, I won't get the whole thing, but the, um, so from her point of view, if she were consistent, her husband shouldn't have had the vaccine either, right? Because it didn't work. He went ahead and got COVID, right? So I, I think I on see. some level she appreciates that, no, it would, I mean, he has to have it because it's a pre-existing condition. COVID could really mess him up, right? So she appreciates on some level, but, but then, you know, like all of us, except for me, uh, <laughs> she has, you know, she has uh, uh, political priors that are disposing her to find, uh, you know, uh, to, disposing her to um, bad arguments. So right. when you're saying political so. priors, you're really you're really sort of wandering into Bayes theorem a little bit. The notion that the probability of something depends on what you already know or what has already transpired, which I think is relevant here. So the so the new thing that you've brought in here for me is the notion that if um, if the point of the vaccine is to reduce the severity of the disease, then mm -hmm. this quote is just uh, a completely crazy. Whereas right. if the point of the vaccine were to pre were to reduce the chance of infection, then she would have a good point. And so your well, point is it have, may not- She would be closer to a good point. She still <laughs> wouldn't have a good point in the sense of we don't have the counterfactual. Like, like right, the assumption right. that you got okay. it, like does it, it doesn't mean that you wouldn't have gotten it twice if you hadn't had it, even assuming it is only right. about <laughs> the binary yeah. you get it or you yeah. don't. Yeah. Well, this is, I mean, this is similar to the X and 2X thing, right? It's like, you know, I, I know it's the in- the same thing actually, yeah. Because... I know it's in my envelope, but I don't know what's yeah. in the, yeah. the counterfactual envelope. Right. And well, another guess way what? in which it's similar is that we is that X, if we're not careful, we uh, uh, in the in the bad reasoning in the previous problem, um, we are uh, we're doing this. Uh, uh, we privilege uh, our own situation. Is that where you're going? No, the equivocation, oh, actually, because X means one thing in one part of the problem and a different thing, in a different part of the problem. I see. And yeah, you, yeah. You, and I mean. You can't run an argument that way. You can't run an equation that way where the right. same variable represents different things. Right. So the um, and here um, the I th uh, there, there's a, you know, analogous circumstance here, which is that um, dose of covid means different things in different parts of this problem. Right. The part where suppose I hadn't got the vaccine. Right. Right. And I got covid. Right. That's a that that's not X. Right. I mean, if if COVID, if dose of COVID with um, uh, with uh, vaccine is X, then dose of COVID without vaccine is not X. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. The, yeah. 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 OK. So. Um, I, I'm Sorry glad that we see some stuff. <laughs> no, it's OK. I'm, I'm glad that we got some. Um, some some parallelism between these mm -hmm. these two problems because you know the one is just a math problem the other one is like i mean i don't i don't want to be overly dramatic here but like lives are at stake in these judgments yeah, yeah. i mean it mm -hmm. matters <laughs> you know so in some sense like we're we're learning ways in which not <laughs> we're learning ways in which brains behave badly in certain mm -hmm. situations it's not i'm smart and therefore i'm immune to this and you're dumb and mm -hmm. therefore you fall into it it's no we all have brains mm -hmm. and we all fall into these biases the question is not whether we're immune to the bias the question is whether we have enough experience to recognize it when it's happening so that we can take the appropriate actions to keep it from influencing our decisions badly mm -hmm. let me suggest by the way that there's a non-mathematical aspect or not, not purely formal aspect to this as well. And I, it, it occurs to me because Pete spends time in card clubs, right? All right. So, and casinos, right? Now, it, even if Pete were as susceptible as the next guy to uh, the gambler's fallacy. Okay. Even if Pete didn't have the processing speed that he has, Right, the process be that allows him to be a better bridge player than you were, along yeah. with a lot of experience and understanding. Pete's worldly enough to look around the casino and say, "They didn't build this to hand people money." <laughs> right? Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and that's an example of reasoning backwards from the solution rather than forward from the problem statement. Hmm. 
right? Like yeah. uh, we say we say in an SAT context, well, there's the question, but the answer choices are part of the mm -hmm. question because you don't mm -hmm. need to answer the question per se. You need to pick the answer from a lineup. Mm -hmm. And that seems to me to be very closely related to what you just said. Like and, no matter what AMC I think, the fact well. is... I mean, yeah, you know the AMC is so much better than we do, but I, I was looking... Um, decided to do like 10 minutes of uh, prep for this sure. call, right? So I was yeah, looking yeah, at yeah. some like 12-year-old AMC. Yeah. And one of the problems I looked at, I'm like, well, I know this is going to be, a, I know the answer is going to be an odd integer. And two, oh. of the answers were odd, two of the answers were odd, odd integers. And I'm like, and um, I'm, trying, I'm trying to pretend I'm doing a time to test, right? Even though I yeah, don't have the sure. clock running. So I'm like, yeah, sure. yeah, one of these numbers is three times the other one. Uh, I don't think I'm going to, I can kind of take a blunt approach here and not care if I'm if I'm double counting something that's on the axis, you know, right? Because you know, like, so I can say I'm going to look at all four quadrants, then add the axes once, or I can say I'm just going to multiply what I get by four. Because come on, how how far off could I be, right? <clears throat> um, mm -hmm. So uh, I couldn't do that unless I were looking at unless I had a a, a, sm a small number of in this case, pretty spread out answer choices, right? Uh, to to so, choose among. I'm just gonna just just because I can't help myself. Mm -hmm. I'm wagering that you were talking about a problem where you're on the coordinate plane and all of the coordinates of the points are integers. In other words, you're on a lattice, mm -hmm. and it's asking yeah. you to count the points that have some particular property, like the sum of x yeah, and y is exactly. less than 10 or some such yeah, thing. Exactly. And you're and pointing was, out, well, yeah. I've got four quadrants that are symmetrical, and then there's the origin. <laughs> So it has to be an odd number. Well, but uh, yeah, uh, that, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the um, and the because my first thought was my first thought would have had me um, uh, counting everything on the axes and in the first quadrant and multiplying by four. Right? Yeah, sure. And the uh, but whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So the uh, and. Uh, that's, you know, uh, close enough, depending on what the answer choices are. Well, right? and depending I think on one the, of the yeah. things that makes that makes the AMC so interesting is that it like if you do have these savant like skills that Pete, you do a pretty good job of, of embodying for our purpose here. Right. Um, it's a great advantage. Yeah. And it's not a necessary component for a lot of these problems. Like it's helpful, but it's not the only way, mm -hmm. you know, no, thinking about, say, OK, I say it, it, in some ways is a limitation because I'm good at certain tasks and certain ways of doing it. And as a result, I, you know, my, my, the breadth of my vision isn't what it could be, which is why I love listening to you guys who have these solutions. And I'm like, whoa, that would not have occurred to me. Well, How and I mean, that's, that's, that's part of why AMC training is so helpful beyond the AMC as well as for AMC if it's done right, right? Which is that we all are biased towards our particular idiosyncratic strengths. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, biasing your solutions towards your strengths is right. And some mm -hmm. of the time, it's a disadvantage. And learning to distinguish between those situations gives you a huge leg up among the high performers. Because everyone mm -hmm. in the high performers room is going to have strengths. And everyone there knows how to lean on them. But you're different in and, that you know how to lean on them most of the time, and you know when it's going to get you in trouble, and you have a toolkit of other things you can do. Sure. And by the way, speaking of that difference, that's why it's a, when I think, you know, oh, I should have majored in math, as I sometimes do, which is mm -hmm. futile, you know, here sure. nine days before my 61st mm -hmm. birthday to think there about what I should have majored in. <laughs> but, yeah. it, but if I think about it, it always is like, I should have, I should have, uh, majored in statistics is where, I, or, or in some kind of uh, related engineering field, because what I'm mm. good at is what I'm good at is modeling, not as good as Wes, but I think this is mostly, you know, if I can maybe be so bold, mostly because Wes has a broader training in the tools. But what I'm really good at is finding an appropriate formal model for an apparently informal situation. Right. Um, the, uh, oh, that's or, a good I, point. Yeah. So the uh, and I'm and I'm I'm good at what Pete's great at, but I'm not great at what Pete's great at. You know. Mm -hmm. So. Yep. Yeah, and I think that like what you've just named as strengths are not things that most people would even consider to be on the list of potential strengths. Mm. And yet, like it's still legit. You know, I think that's really interesting.